<laughs> so, <laughs> so what do you like how were you thinking of integrating it with students? What is your kind of vision for that? Well, a couple thoughts I had. Um, have you used the uh, discussion boards with learning at UW? Mm -hmm. um, I, there are academic technology people in the room, so I'll be careful about how to say it. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I, they're just so static. And uh, oftentimes, it's, it, I, frankly, it, it sounds like pablum. They're sitting there, putting stuff in there because they've been asked to. Um, this type of blog-like platform, I think, invites, uh, because it seems so flexible with all things digital, invites, I think, a more authentic, lively exchange, um, even more so than, than our regular use of email, and depending on email. This is sort of top of the mind. This is what's in my head right now. This is how I'm reacting to it. So I'm thinking of uh, the possibility of, uh, I have some relatively larger classes of 30, 40, 50 students, where I might want to set up separate groups within that 40, say a group of 10 to make it manageable. That's how I've tried uh, discussion boards on our UW. And some of those, like teaching a 100% online course, if that, since that was the primary uh, learning management system I used, I did those discussion boards for some regular kind of input. This just feels, uh, honestly, it feels a little bit more 21st century. I think I'd want to use it as a discussion board. But more as, I saw a similar one, uh, PB Works. You familiar with that? Um, I know, uh, yeah. And uh, Greg Downey, is it? In uh, journalism, uses that. Um, where students are creating their own page resources for each other. And uh, I, it, it just feels more lively. So that's one idea is the application that I've used in prior courses with the discussion board would be kind of how I'd like to use this. So what is like, I haven't used it, but we've talked about like, is it Piazza, do I have the right name? Mm -hmm. So like what are the pros and cons of Piazza and discussion threads and this? Come back in two weeks and, and we're going to have a big presentation on okay. Piazza by Brian Usselman okay. who uses it in chemistry. Okay. And um, from what I've heard, he's mastered it. So mm. So they're all kind of similar, those, but they have pros and cons or very different? They are <coughs> much different. Okay. Piazza goes towards, it, you put out a question as an instructor, and the students collaborate towards one okay. right answer. Okay. Um, this is sort of a submit anything, curate, it's kind of in many ways you could have students curate content that has to relate with the course, okay. um, but it's not going towards one specific answer. It's more theme-based, I would say. Could you click the uh, boxes, the little grid of boxes next to your name yes. in the upper right? So I just leave it there. That's good. It's a simple little thing, but for me, technology, as I like the simple little things, that I'm in our community, and someone references, I put the latest uh, syllabus version in our docs. I go right to docs. It's right, I don't have to re-enter my password or whatever. It's part, part of the robust Google suite of things. I can go right there. It's right there. And, and the nice thing is that, um, again, a little simple thing for me, uh, it'll open in a, in a separate tab. So I've got, I'm not losing my place anywhere. I can go right back to that um, and, and use all of the other Google functions. Yeah. One of the affordances of the D2L discussion board is kind of the structure that you can provide. If you've got a, an eight-week summer course, for example, you can provide some structure to keep everyone in a, in a similar area um, for focused discussions. Are there ways to provide a little bit of structure without kind of you know pinning people in through like tags or? Now, can, could everyone tag a post as being like a week one response, or what are some options? For on, on the left side here, you see these, it says all posts, events, and photos. You can customize those entirely. So you can have them be the different themes of the semester, and then when the students post something, they can choose to select it under, to have it categorized under one of these categories. They can also do things like hashtags, just as they do in Twitter. So they can do a hashtag with videos um, and so somebody can do a search up in the search box, which is behind that, of the community for all the videos, and they'll see all the videos. Or 
you know, something even more specific within a theme. Um, and I would, I would imagine you could provide that direction to students too, that when you enter this, be sure you tag it to whatever, you know, video or, uh, yeah. I would, my honest response too is that this was the refreshing thing I found about Google Plus. As I mentioned, my own inclination with the D2L discussion boards was just how static they were and trying to follow through the threads and then go back and then go back. Um, there is, I, I hate to use the over, there's something organic and intuitive about this, that this is the latest that's on someone's mind, and I'm not afraid to go back through and to, to know where it is. And I, I sometimes wonder about how our students, our, our traditional age undergraduate students think, and their familiarity with this environment. Um, and I thought about that very difference. Well, what is it I like about this more so than the discussion board? I think that's part of it. I don't know how else to describe it but it's got a real 21st century feel to it, I guess. It's an environment that I think our students are much more familiar and comfortable with, and that was a wake-up call for me that, geez, I guess I, I, I do well to kind of get up to speed with this. Um, the, go ahead. One of the things, um, I guess maybe in many ways echoing that, is that structured discussion sometimes is too f narrow and focused, whereas by having these little plates or whatever across there that might have some not directly related but sort of uh, tangentially related things allows for some synchronistic sort of connections being made that oh, I never thought of taking this angle to it that sometimes having that focused direction eliminates because oh this is too far off topic so I don't want to introduce that um, which can be a, a, a con if it gets too Crazy, but it can also be a, a pro well, in making connections. That's why I would envision working with a TA with a class size of 50, let's say. I'd want to set up like five groups of 10 mm -hmm. would feel right. Uh, I've done that with the discussion boards too. I used to do online with up to 60 students and it was a free for all. And I was like, oh, this is a bit. Wet. But if you had that, that's about the size of our group on a regular basis, it feels right. It doesn't feel overwhelming and it's not as scattered as that. And in, you know, our, our, I, I work with the TA with regular meetings and we look at class um, components and you know, uh, so that's something we'd look at is, okay, why don't you take these two, I'll take these three groups. We'll, we'll look for things like that. Where are the threads, where are the kind? And then it would go to, as I've done with the discussion boards, you know, required to do X minimum posts or, um, and I'm not a big fan of uh, volume as much as quality. So really underscoring to students, uh, you know, g at least visit. Do you know, that brings up a good point too, John. With this as a WIST study, do you, are we able to see any of the analytics behind it? Are we, you know how with D2L I can go into the discussion and see all the statistics of students' participation in reading and stuff really like that? Really good question for the Google Apps team. Yeah. We'll make note of that and ask. I don't know the answer. Because that might be an important piece too, that uh, to at least find out. And I've followed that up. I don't know if any of you have used the statistics on D2L, but um, written to the students who have had no right. clicks uh -oh. <laughs> in the last month or so. Yeah. Well, any other questions for Michael? Yes, Ruth. Let I hear. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand <coughs> exactly like, how do you respond to each other? How, how do you know when someone is responding? How do you, I mean, I see, I see blocks. So John has up here notifications on, and with his little wheel there, he can decide um, whether he wants that on or off. If it's on, that means when someone has a post to your Google Plus community, it generates an email to whatever email is on your account that says, and it'll actually start uh, you can actually have it uh, have a preview of what's there. So um, it'll tell you in a quick email message, Linda just uh, added a post about a copy of a syllabus or uh, another unit idea. And you find it by going then? Well, it'll show up in your email and then there'll be a link to it. That's one way of doing it. The other way is if you start to have um, a habit if you're in the several communities and you, right now I just keep this Google Plus uh, 
community open pinned to my as an open tab all the time. And this little number two up here that's red tells me that in this community there's two new notifications that I haven't looked at yet. And why don't you click on that and show how it displays? So that's what I'll do. I'll go and I'll see f sometimes five, and it'll just highlight them over here, hey, and then I can go. Back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I can click on it to see what that particular new post was. It's kind of a mini feed of all of the things that I'm interested in, of the communities that I've joined and that I'm active in, and I can set that in my feed in my in this little gear item. Uh, or maybe it's my profile, I don't remember exactly right now, as to how many I get. You know, the most important ones are a medium or all of them. Um, so it, I've got three settings of how frequently you want to get those as well. So what we can do right now is we can actually, um, on these sheets in front of you, thank you, Michael, by the sure. way, for, for your yeah. discussion. Thanks. Thanks for sharing your story.